Alright, so we are continuing with our discussion about uh, studying spaces of uh, meromorphic functions. Okay, we have to do topology on spaces of meromorphic functions, and uh, then, you know, um, I was trying to explain last time that you know, uh, in general, if you go and draw inspiration from topology, okay, uh, the, uh, the usually if you take the space of uh, functions, okay then the uh, uh, what you do is that you put the restrictions uh, you put restrictions like you know uh, and of course you know you assume that you are uh, worried about functions which are taking real values or complex values okay so basically you start with the uh, with the topological space if you want in general or you take a metric space and then you look at the functions on that uh, which are either real valued or complex valued okay uh, of course, you know even if the uh, uh, set you start with is just a set, it is not even a topological space. Uh, uh, even then this set of all functions, real valued functions or complex valued functions will form a real or complex algebra, okay. That is it will be a, a ring, a commutative ring under pointwise addition and multiplication and uh, it will include the constants which are the real numbers or the complex numbers as constant functions and uh, uh, it will also have a vector space structure over the constants. Okay. So, it will be if you are considering real valued functions it is a real vector space, if you are considering complex valued functions it is a complex vector space and it is in fact it will be a real algebra or a complex algebra because it is also a ring, it is a competitive ring with the ring structure compatible with the vector space structure. Okay. The ring multiplication is compatible with the scalar multiplication. Okay. So, uh, but then this is for any set, but then now you know if you make that set to also to have a topological space structure in addition, okay. Uh, then what you can do is um, uh, 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 well even, even, before, uh, even before that suppose you still only have a set okay x and uh, uh, you are only looking at say real valued functions or complex valued functions on the set okay which as i told you is an algebra okay what you can do is that if you are looking at bounded functions okay uh, namely that you are looking at functions whose images in the real line or the complex line is they are bounded subsets okay if you are looking at such bounded functions that forms a subset okay uh, and in fact it forms a sub algebra okay uh, because the sum and product of bounded functions is again bounded all right and so you get a smaller algebra uh, which consists of now it consists of only real or complex valued functions but which are bounded okay now the advantage of having this boundedness is that you can now define a norm on this uh, on this on the vector space structure and make it into a normed vector space or a normed linear space okay uh, and the norm is just a supremum norm. So, what you do is that since you are looking at a function on a set which is taking real or complex values and since uh, the, the values it is taking are bounded 
you can simply take the modulus of its values and take the supremum uh, of all those uh, values okay and you get what is called the supremum norm of a function okay now this supremum norm will be a finite quantity okay it will be a finite positive real number and it will be uh, and it will be this norm will induce a, a, a metric space structure so what happens is that if you look at just the set of uh, real valued or complex valued functions which are bounded and you add this norm then you get a normed vector space it is a normed linear space and it is in fact uh, you know this any normed linear space has a metric uh, which is just uh, given by basically you know uh, the distance between two elements in that vector space is just the uh, norm of their difference okay that is the metric. Now with respect to this metric it becomes a metric space and then in fact with respect to this metric space it is actually a, it is actually a complete metric space okay it becomes a complete metric space and the completeness is just because of you know completeness of the real line or completeness of the complex plane or which is more generally completeness of the Euclidean spaces R n okay R 1 is the real line R 2 is the same as the complex plane more or topologically okay. So <coughs> uh, therefore we get so much if you just have a set x if you just have a set x let me repeat and you are looking at uh, this all the collection of all uh, real valued or complex valued functions on x which are bounded that is already a Banach space it is a complete normed linear space it is complete as a metric space for the metric induced by the norm okay. Now you put the extra condition that the set x is uh, also a topological space for example it may be a metric space right you put an extra condition now on the set x it is no longer just a set but it is a topological space now the advantage that you have uh, this extra structure of topological space on x tells you that you can further restrict functions instead of looking at arbitrary functions you can look at functions which are continuous okay. So now what you can do is you can start looking at not only bounded real valued or complex valued functions on the set x but you can also insist that you are only going to look at those among these that are continuous with respect to the topology on x okay and that is how you get the space of uh, uh, a real valued or complex valued continuous bounded functions uh, on a topological space x and both of these are Banach algebras okay they are commutative Banach algebras over the base field which is either complex numbers or the real numbers okay and so the, uh, but, but the point is that uh, uh, where uh, the, the topology on this Banach algebra this topology has got to do with uh, actually it has got to do with uh, uh, it has got to do with pointwise convergence okay. So uh, if you if you have a sequence of functions which converges to a limit function uh, in this uh, uh, in this in this in this Banach algebra okay then what it means is that it not only means that the functions are uh, converging point wise okay it does not only mean point wise convergence it actually means uniform convergence okay that is the fact. So uh, a sequence of so let me say it in simple words a sequence of let x be a topological space let f n be a sequence of continuous bounded real valued or complex valued functions on this topological space x sub then f n converges to f for the topology the for the topology or the metric space structure on the Banach algebra of functions if and only if f n converges to f point wise, point wise with respect to x and the convergence is also uniform okay. So the moral of the story is that the topology on the space of functions that you are trying to study has certainly got to do with point wise convergence and it has in fact got to do with uniform convergence. Okay. Now what I want to tell you is that see this is the see this is the motivation from the top from topology but with complex analysis things are more complicated because you see because your, your functions are not just continuous functions your functions are going to be analytic functions whenever you consider them and more generally uh, we won't actually worry about uh, families of meromorphic functions okay and you know meromorphic functions are slightly more complicated because they have poles and at the poles they go to infinity because by definition a pole at a pole the function goes to infinity. So it means that you will have to do something you, the, the complication you have to worry about is that you cannot just consider real or complex valued functions okay 
for example, if you are looking at meromorphic functions, you have to take functions which with values in the extended complex plane, you have to include the value at infinity because that is the value you will assign to the function at a pole, okay. That is one point, okay. Then the other thing is about, uh, so you know the modification as you come from uh, the topological point of view which is the motivation to our situation which is we want to study meromorphic functions, the first modification is you have to include the value infinity, okay. So, you cannot just look at complex valued functions, you have to look at functions which value is in the Riemann sphere, uh, essentially being thought of as the extended complex plane. So, you should, so you should not take functions with values in C, you should take functions, functions with values in C union infinity, okay. Now, uh, and, and thankfully C union infinity is not very bad, in fact it is very good because it is, it is, it is in fact a metric space, it is a complete compact metric space, okay. And that is because of the stereographic projection which identifies it with the Riemann sphere, okay. That is one part of the story. The other part of the story is that I told you that from the topological point of view, uh, the topology on the space of functions has got to do with pointwise convergence and in fact it has got to do with normal, con uh, with, with uniform convergence. But you see again when you come to complex analysis, when you are studying, ho with, um, studying holomorphic functions or analytic functions, you do not get uniform convergence in general. What you get is only uniform convergence on compact sets, you do not get uniform convergence just like that on, on whatever domain you are working with, okay. You only get normal convergence which is unif which is pointwise convergence which is uniform only restrict when restricted to compact subsets. So, you see therefore, uh, what I am trying to tell you is that see when you, when we take inspiration or when we try to think of an analogy from topology and move it to complex analysis, okay. The, the, the in, in topology what you are thinking of is just spaces of continuous functions and, and bounded continuous functions, okay. And they are real valued or complex valued, okay. And the topology has got to do with exactly uniform convergence. But when you come to complex analysis, you are worried about spaces of analytic functions or holomorphic functions or you are more generally worried about spaces of meromorphic functions, okay. Then the complication is that the first of all is that you have to worry with values in the extended plane, you have to add the value uh, point at infinity to get a value at infinity. Then the other thing is that you will also have to worry about this uniform convergence business because uniform convergence you do not get. So, I will tell you why, I uh, will I'll give you a very very simple example. The, simpler, the simplest example of that is for example, gotten by looking at the uh, you know the geometric series which is you know the fundamental series that we all have been studying from high school and you if you really you know if you go back to your first course in complex analysis you will see that almost everything that you have proved about power series started with an argument that has got to do with uh, you know uh, simple properties of geometric series okay. So, uh, so, so let me so let me say that. Uh, so, look at uh, 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 the geometric series. Let us look at this geometric series sigma uh, uh, z power n, n equal to 0 to infinity, okay. This is, this is simply 1 plus z plus z squared and so on. This is a familiar series and you know uh, you have all studied this, this is, this, this is actually we write this as 1 by 1 minus z uh, if mod z less than 1, okay. This is something that uh, we have all seen from probably high school, okay. Now, uh, but what is, uh, what is going on here? So, the first thing is that uh, uh, 1 by 1 minus z, the function on the right is an analytic function in the domain mod z less than 1, which is a unit disk, okay. And whatever we have written on the left side, which is the geometric series, is actually the Taylor representation. It is a, it's just a Taylor expansion of the function centered at the origin. So, it is actually the Maclaurin expansion, okay. So, this is just Maclaurin expansion. So, all you are saying is that 1 by 1 minus z has the Maclaurin expansion given by the geometric series, okay. Now, the fact is that if you, if you uh, were to go a little uh, back to your uh, 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 first course in complex analysis, uh, you would have noticed that, you know, the, uh, the big deal is that this convergence is, uh, the point is that this convergence is absolute, okay it is uniform on compact subsets, okay. These two, 
these two come because of the Weierstrass M test. Okay, Be the Weierstrass M test, mind you, is a tool that will help you to decide whether a series converges, uh, you know, uniformly. And uh, the way it works is <coughs> that it will always give you absolute convergence because <coughs> what the Weierstrass M test does is actually it tests the absolute series, that is, the series gotten by putting mod to the terms of the original series and it tests, tests that series for convergence and you know absolute convergence implies convergence, it is stronger than convergence. So uh, that is what we use to prove that this series converges absolutely and uniformly on, on, on any closed subset of the disk. But the point is that if you take the whole disk, the convergence is not uniform, okay. It is, uh, this is something that you can work out, okay. You, you try to apply, you assume that it is, uh, uh, you can do it in two ways, either you can directly uh, write out estimates or you can uh, for example assume it converges uniformly on the whole, whole disk and you will get a glaring contradiction, okay. So the, the point about, uh, the, so this is the point I am trying to tell you. See, uh, look at this fact that this series does not converge uniformly on the unit disk. So you see what, look at what we are getting. Let me put f1 of z equal to 1. So, so let me uh, let me write this here uh, about uh, converges uh, absolutely uh, and uniformly. So I am using A, B, S, L, Y for absolutely and U, F, L, Y for uniformly as abbreviations, okay, uh, on compacts, on compact subsets of uh, mod Z less than 1 and since any compact subset of mod Z less than 1, the unit disk is always contained in a closed disk centered at the origin. You can actually verify this condition only for closed disks centered at the origin contained inside the unit disk, okay. Uh, and that is how it is done when you do the Weierstrass M test. You take the radius of that closed disk as the uh, and its powers as the, uh, the Weierstrass constants, uh, the MNs that are used in the M test, okay. So, uh, but the point is. Uh, so here is, so, so, so let, let me write this in red because this is very, very important. Uh, uh, so let me write here, but not uniformly, okay. So this is something that I want you to check. If, if you have not checked it, please check it, please check it because it is a, it is a lesson that you know, it is not the way you, you always want it to be, it is not uniform on the, on, but not, but not, so when I say but not uniformly, I mean it is not uniform on the whole disk, okay. You get uniformness only on compact subsets of the disk. So what does, see what does it mean? Suppose I write the sequence of functions which are given by the partial sums of the series. So I write f1 of z is 1, f2 of z is 1 plus z, uh, then I write f3 of z to be 1 plus z plus z squared and so on. Then you see what we are saying is that fn tends to f, okay, because by definition uh, that is what definition of convergence of a series means, it means it is convergence of the partial sums and fn is the nth partial sum, okay. So fn converges to f and mind you how is this convergence? This convergence is only normal, it is it is absolute of course, uh, on the whole disk it is absolute, on the whole unit disk it is absolute, but it is uniform only on compact sets that is it is normal but it is not uniform on the whole disk. So the, therefore you see uh, you are, you now have a, uh, you have a problem in, ad in adapting, uh, in trying to think of uh, or in trying to compare, compare with the situation in topology. See in topology if, uh, uh, if a sequence of functions converges to a function f, if you want it in the space of functions then it should be point wise convergence and uniform convergence, okay. But that is not happening here, that is not happening here. What is happening here is that you are getting point wise convergence no doubt, fn converges to f, point wise is always there. The problem is it is not uniform, it is not uniform on the whole domain which is a unit disk. It is uniform only on compact subsets, you are getting only normal convergence, you see that is a technical point. So you know, uh, so, so what I am trying to say is the following thing, see if you take, if you take uh, uh, if you take the domain D to be mod Z less than 1, the unit disk, okay, the set of all Z such that mod Z less than 1, okay. And then, you know, I can do this, I can take the, you know, 
I can take the uh, I can take L D which is the uh, set of all uh, maps from D to C. This is a set of all uh, set theoretic maps from D to C and this is a this is an algebra this is a C algebra ok. One would take B of D to be the set of all uh, um, among all the functions you take the bounded functions ok such that so you take, take the set of all f such that f is bounded ok. And then uh, inside this you take uh, the set of all uh, uh, continuous uh, uh, functions and you know that you know this is an inclusion of uh, this, this is an in, these are all inclusions of Banach algebras ok. Now, so here you see I am, I am looking at uh, this last set below this is a set of all continuous complex valued bounded con complex valued functions on the on the disk all right. Now you see what happens is that uh, uh, if you if you watch uh, I have all these I have all these functions f1 of z is 1 f2 of z is 1 plus z f3 of z is 1 plus z plus z squared I mean these are just the partial sums of the geometric series. Now you see and you know f n converges to f which is 1 by 1 minus z ok. Each f n is of course bounded because if you uh, you can use a triangle inequality for example f1 is of course bound uh, is constant so it is bounded f2 is 1 plus z and mod f2 is mod of 1 plus z which is less than or equal to 1 plus mod z by the triangle inequality that is less than or equal to 2. Similarly f3 is less than or equal to 3 ok. You, you see that all the f n's are bounded certainly they are bounded at continuous functions and the, 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 the limit function f which is uh, 1 by 1 minus z which is the limit of the geometric series that function is also continuous holomorphic f does not even belong here f is not even here ok f, so f is not f is not bounded because values of f can become very large uh, if z tends to 1 for example on the real axis uh, if i approach from uh, the left ok so uh, in any case uh, what i want you to understand is that you see uh, if you have fn tending to f uh, of course you don't have it in this space ok but you have f n tending to f in uh, uh, it is it is rather funny you have this this space h of d ok you have this space h of d this h of d is the is the set of all uh, holomorphic functions on d analytic functions on d ok and the point is that there are analytic functions like 1 by 1 minus z which are not bounded ok that is because they have a singularity. Uh, on the boundary of t ok. So, what is happening is that this 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 convergence is happening here in the space of holomorphic functions and you see that you know uh, it certainly it is point wise convergence that is for sure it is point wise convergence ok. But it is it is it is not uniform ok it is only uniform on compact sets. So, you see uh, why I am saying all this is that I want you to uh, I want you to see that when you go to complex analysis things are slight things are very different. I mean in normal topology uh, you look at bounded functions and then you look at uh, among those bounded functions you look at continuous functions ok. But then uh, what look at what is happening in in uh, in the context of complex analysis uh, even in the case of a very simple domain which is a unit disk it is a bounded domain ok. Even in that case you have a sequence of functions which are very much in this space ok, but they converge to a point which is outside ok and the convergence is of course point wise but it is not uniform it is only in uniform on compact subsets ok. So, this should tell you that you know uh, uh, that uh, that something has to be done uh, if you want to do topology on the space of holomorphic functions something uh, more serious has to be done ok. Uh, and of course, you know. Let me tell you that if you if you take uh, the meromorphic functions on on D, if you take the space of meromorphic functions on D, uh, they see they uh, uh, then you know uh, things are slightly more complicated. I can't think of them as functions from D to C. 
okay i can think of them as only as functions from d minus the poles of that meromorphic function to c and if i want to think of them as functions on d i will have to include uh, the point at infinity so uh, uh, what i'll have to do is i'll have to take this i'll have to take this set the set of all f from d to c union infinity i will take this uh, c union the point at infinity i will take this guy i will take this and this is well uh, let me call this as something l star or uh, l star of d this is a bigger set than this uh, so uh, this is a subset of this and this is here and this is sitting here okay so the moral of the story is that you know uh, you have to worry about this value at infinity and you will have to worry about the fact that uh, uh, life uh, if you are if you are looking at analytic functions you are not going to get uniform convergence you are going to get uniform convergence only on compact sets okay and the very the simplest example namely geometric series tells you that okay of course there are situations where you can get uh, uniform convergence on an unbounded set that can happen okay they, but they are they are special cases okay for example you know uh, let me give you one example take the zeta function take zeta of z to be you know sigma uh, 1 by n power z n equal to 1 to infinity okay and this is by definition uh, uh, well you know this is uh, sigma n equal to 1 to infinity uh, n power minus z and the way you define n power minus z is you define it as e power minus z ln n okay using properties of logarithms and this ln n is actually the real logarithm okay this is the real logarithm and <coughs> uh, the fact is that this function here is a this is a Riemann zeta function and uh, uh, of course you know it is it is very very famous it is the most famous function uh, uh, introduced of course by Riemann uh, 157 years ago okay and uh, it is the most mysterious function in all of mathematics and uh, the Riemann hypothesis which is a conjecture about that function is one of the most uh, famous unsolved problems and uh, the the effect of solving that is like you would have solved thousands of theorems in number theory okay so it is a it is a very very it is a very very deep function a very mysterious function but the fact is that this this converges uniformly for uh, any bound any any closed right half plane uh, to the right of uh, real part of z equal to 1. So let me write this converges uniformly uh, and absolutely for uh, mod z greater than or equal to 1 plus epsilon epsilon positive uh, so in, no, I should not say mod z I mean real part of z so this is you know this is this region is something like this so you have so this is 1 uh, 1 plus epsilon is somewhere to the right of that and uh, uh, in fact if you take this this shaded region along with the boundary uh, this is a shaded region where you get uniform convergence okay it is a half plane it is a half plane along with that vertical line which passes through x equal to 1 plus epsilon okay and that is a closed set mind you because the boundary is included it is a closed set and this is an unbounded closed set it is not a compact set but in spite of it being unbounded you get actually uniform convergence okay and in fact therefore you will get convergence on uh, the whole right half plane so you, you, you what you will get is that it converges on a real part of z greater than 1 okay so uh, so the moral of the story is that there are special cases where you can get uniform convergence on a huge set even on an unbounded set okay but that's not that will happen only in special cases you cannot expect it to happen always all right so there is an issue the the issue is that uh, whenever you are studying spaces of uh, analytic functions or more generally meromorphic functions you can expect only normal convergence okay that is one issue. Then uh, see now what I want to say is that uh, uh, in any case uh, uh, so we, so you know uh, so to sum up what I want to say is that we will have to worry about when we are worrying about analytic functions or meromorphic functions we have to worry about two things one thing is it is not uniform convergence it is normal convergence that is that is what you will get. 
So, uh, whenever you are, uh, so you must keep this in mind uh, as a philosophy, whenever you are uh, worrying about sequences of functions converging uh, in theorems and complex analysis, mind you uh, this is equivalent to doing topology on the space of such functions and the topology is being done essentially by looking at pointwise convergence which is normal ok. This is, this, is a, this is one fact that you should always remember. And the other thing that you will have to remember is that you will have to worry about the value infinity when you are worried about meromorphic functions ok. And the way you deal with infinity is by always appealing to the stereographic projection and comparing infinity with the north pole and con comparing uh, a neighborhood of infinity with the neighborhood of the north pole via the stereographic projection. So, these are the techniques that we should use ok. Now, what I will tell you is that uh, uh, at least uh, uh, this is again something that you should have seen in a first course in complex analysis, but let me recall. Suppose you have you have a domain in the complex plane, suppose you have uh, a sequence of functions uh, analytic functions defined on the domain ok. <coughs> Uh, so, these are honest analytic functions, they are they are holomorphic functions. Suppose this sequence converges to a function normally on the domain, then the limit function is actually analytic, it is holomorphic ok. So, it is not it is not that it will it will go out of uh, the space of analytic functions ok. So, um, so let me, so I, I think you should have seen a proof of that uh, and but in any case let me recall it. So, uh, let so, you know, so the first thing is when you take a limit uh, of analytic function, you should get an analytic function ok. At least that you must have otherwise you cannot go ahead. But the point is we have the, the reason why you why it works out well is because you have we have agreed that what whatever we do it will be pointwise convergence which is normal and this normal convergence is uh, you know uh, is is the technical thing with which you can do a lot of things because actually it is a local version of uniform convergence. It, it is it is stronger than a local version of uniform convergence ok. So, when you say uh, if as, uh, there is a normal convergence you are saying it is normal it the convergence is uniform in compact sets ok. Now, there are two types of compact sets that you can think of which are important for complex analysis. One kind of compact set is take any point take a small disc around that point ok uh, and then take its closure that is a compact set. But the beautiful thing is that it is a compact set which contains an open set around that point. So, if you have a normal convergence then you will have certainly a uniform convergence therefore, on sufficiently small neighborhoods of every point that is because given any point you all you have to do is you have to choose a sufficiently small neighborhood whose closure is also in your set ok. Basically you will have to choose a sufficiently small circle surrounded by that point such that the circle and the interior of the circle is in your set which will happen because you are only working with open sets and points inside open sets. So, uh, therefore, what you will get is you will get uniform convergence on sufficiently small disks. So, you must remember normal convergence does not give you uniform convergence on the whole set, but locally it gives you convergence uniform convergence it gives you uniform convergence on small small disks ok sufficiently small disks that is one fact. Then the other fact is what is the other kind of compact set that you are always interested in uh, you see as you know one of the most important techniques in the theory of complex analysis is integration Cauchy's integration theory and what do you integrate on you integrate on contours and what are contours they are they are of course compact sets because they are closed in they are curves curves basically they are images of a they are just continuous images of a closed and bounded interval compact interval on the real line. So, they are compact. So, the advantage of that is that the, the other important type of compact set that you are always interested in are contours and then uh, uniform convergence on the contour will tell you that uh, integrating the limit function on the contour is the same as integrating each of the functions on the contour and then taking the limit. So, you can interchange the limit and the integral that is what compactness uh, uniform convergence on uh, for contours tells you. So, you see this you, the, therefore, moral of the story is that uh, while normal convergence is not uniform convergence on the whole set, it still gives you everything that you need locally for the for the differentiation theory it gives you everything uh, that you it gives you normal converge it, it gives you actually uniform convergence on sufficiently small disks surrounding every point and for the integration theory it does give you uniform convergence on every contour 
and therefore everything goes through nicely okay. You, so what this tells you is you really do not need uniform convergence on a whole open set and uh, uh, the, the example of the geometric series tells you that that is that is that is what is expected and that is what you will get you will not get anything better than that okay but that is good enough okay. So, so let me write this down let let f n from d to c uh, be a, a sequence of analytic functions analytic or holomorphic functions on a domain d inside the complex plane uh, suppose f n converges to f normally in d then f is analytic. So, so the moral of the story is that you know uh, under normal convergence, normal convergence preserves analyticity as when a normal limit of analytic functions is analytic that is all I am saying ok. And, and so let me tell you what, uh, what is the way you prove this, the way you prove this is uh, first of all because uh, each f n is continuous ok, uh, f will become continuous. And why is that true? Because continuity is a local property. To show that f is continuous on the domain, it is enough to show that f is continuous on sufficiently small disks surrounded at every point. But if I take a sufficiently small disk okay, such that its closure itself is contained in the domain, then I will in fact get uniform convergence and you know a uniform limit of continuous function is continuous. Therefore, locally I will get continuity, but continuity is a local property if it is true locally, it is true globally. So, I get continuity. Okay. The same uh, argument ap applies to analyticity, how do I check a function is analytic if it is locally analytic it is analytic because analyticity is also a local property. So, what I have to do is that I have to take, take any point in the domain I have to show that in a small disk surrounding that point the function is analytic. Uh, how do I do that? It is very very simple. If I take a small disk surrounding that point of course, I have a uniform convergence okay, because I have taken a sufficiently small disk. Uh, the closure of that disk uh, is a compact subset of the domain. Okay. Now, how do I get analyticity? It is very simple, I simply uh, use Morera's theorem. What I do is that I take, a, I, take a, I take a point, I take a sufficiently small disk surrounding that point, open disk. Okay. If I take the closure of the disk, then the convergence is actually uh, uniform because it is a compact subset. So, the moral of the story is that to check that the function is uh, analytic inside that disk, I just have to, I know already it is continuous. So, I have to only check that the integral over any closed path is 0, the integral over any simple closed contour is 0 is what I have to check. But if I want to, so I try to integrate the function around a simple closed contour inside that disk. But then integrating the function is the same as integrating the uh, sequence, each member of the sequence of functions and then taking the limit, I can change the integration and the limit. Okay. So, but if I integrate each of those functions in the original sequence around a simple closed contour, I am going to get 0 because they are analytic that is because of Cauchy's theorem. So, I am I am taking what I am going what I will get is that the integral of this limit function over any uh, simple closed contour in a sufficiently small disk surrounding a point is always 0 and Morera's theorem will tell me therefore, that it is analytic and therefore, it is locally analytic and therefore, it is globally analytic that is it. Okay. So, so this is how you do it with, with uh, sequences of analytic functions, but the problem is that when you start worrying uh, about uh, 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 meromorphic functions things become uh, things become complicated. So, so you know so let me um, uh, so let me look at the following example. Uh, so, let me let me take another example. And these see the point about these examples is that you, you should know what kind of things happen. So, here is another example. What you do is you take the domain D to be the exterior of the uh, unit disk. Okay. You just take the set of all uh, mod z greater than 1. Mind you this is a deleted neighborhood of the point at infinity. You know the exterior of a disk is always a deleted neighborhood of the point at infinity. If you add the point at infinity this becomes actually a 
neighborhood of infinity in the extended plane okay and this is a deleted neighborhood of infinity and what you do is you put f you put f n of z you put it as z power n take this honest sequence of functions okay now what will happen is uh, you can see uh, you if you fix mind you uh, if you take any value of z greater than 1 uh, with modulus greater than 1 that is it is it is basically a point lying outside the unit circle okay in the complex plane okay and if I plug it in uh, this f n uh, the sequence f n I will get these the I will get higher powers of that point and that is going to go to infinity in modulus as n tends to infinity because mod z is greater than 1 mod z power n is also greater than 1 and mod z power n will tend to infinity as n tends to infinity. So, what happens is that every at every point this sequence converges to what it con the, the, the value it converges to is a point at infinity ok. It converges to the point at infinity all right and therefore, the limit function is what if the limit function is a function which maps the whole exterior of the unit disc to the point at infinity. It is a constant function with value infinity ok that is what you get in the limit. Uh, now, this is the kind of thing that that uh, this is the kind of pathology that happens and we have to take care of this ok. So, uh, mind you in this example all these f n's are in fact uh, holomorphic functions f n is a sequence of holomorphic functions f n is, is in fact a sequence of holomorphic functions and f n converges to the function which is constantly equal to the value infinity at every point and of course you know uh, if you if you check very carefully this convergence is even uniform on compact subsets ok. So, it is uh, so here is uh, here is a here is something that, uh, that you do not expect that is happening uh, a nice sequence of functions uh, even holomorphic functions even analytic functions on a domain can actually converge uniformly to the function which is constantly equal to infinity at all points ok and that is no that is no function by any of our standards ok it is it is certainly not a meromorphic function it is not it is there is no set on which it is analytic it is it is basically a constant function it is the function that maps the whole domain on to the point at infinity. So, so let me write that down. So, f n converges to infinity and what is this infinity where where infinity of z is the is the point at infinity for all z in d ok and and this this infinity this belongs to uh, uh, the set of all functions from d to the extended plane ok. In fact, it belong it is that unique function which maps the whole domain to the extended to, to the point at infinity ok. So, uh, so this is uh, this is one standard pathology. So, so you see see what is happening even a, a even a uh, sequence of holomorphic functions even a sequence of good analytic functions is can is going uniformly to infinity all right this is happening. So, the moral of the story is that when this happens for good holomorphic functions it will also happen for meromorphic functions. So, the moral of the story is that whenever you study uh, uh, sequence of meromorphic functions ok and particularly we will be interested only in normal convergence ok we will we will have to define what is meant by normal convergence of a sequence of meromorphic functions that has to be done carefully ok because we will have to worry at the value of about the value at infinity and we will also have to worry about the point at infinity. If your if your domain also includes the point at infinity you have the you have in the domain also if you have the point at infinity and in the range also if you have the point at infinity then it is a double complication you have to worry about it ok. But in any case we are going to be worried about sequences of meromorphic functions which are converging normally and the first pathology you should expect 
and this is the only pathology that you have to really worry about is that that sequence may converge uniformly to the function which is infinity everywhere. So, you will have to do this, you have to add this function artificially okay, as a function uh, in your, in your uh, list of functions okay, and deal with it. Okay. So, this is, uh, so this is uh, something that uh, uh, one needs to worry about. Okay. So, let me stop.